Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come one, come all. Here we are. Today is a new day. Today is a good day. Today, the Mall Bonkabi is opening up. Well, Cafe Amazon is opening up. Uh, this is the first coffee shop that's been open in the mall. Before the mall opens, it's the first coffee shop that's been open uh, in how many months now? June, July, August, probably about two and a half months, something like that. Uh, but you know, I, I walk down, you can see the guy up top here walking along. I think you can see him there. A couple guys up there walking around. But, you know, I was told that uh, Starbucks will be opening up tomorrow. I walked by there and it, it's, it, boy, I don't know, maybe, maybe they'll work on it all night and it'll, they'll get it done, I don't know. Could happen, but it doesn't look all that great. I mean, you know, uh, from what I can see, it looks like they have a lot of work to do. So maybe they'll get it done today. Maybe they'll get it done next week. I don't know. I don't know how long it'll take. And frankly, I don't really care. When they get it done, they get it done. If they get it done, they get it done. This place is fine. It's actually a pretty big cafe in Amazon. Uh, bigger than the one that they had in the back of the mall. Let me think. Did they have another one? I think they had another one up top on, on the top floor or something like that. Um, yeah, but they had one on the ground floor in the back and that was pretty small. Uh, there was really nowhere to sit. And in this place, there's all kinds of places to sit and it's very comfortable. They have an outdoor seating. They have uh, cushion chairs. They ha I'm on a nice cushion right now. And you can see behind me, they have the balloons. They even gave me a little pen, which I thought was quite nice because actually the pen is pretty nice. It's not a bad pen, you know, for them to give away. It's one of these nice rollers, you know, it's got their name on it and, it, and it's a pretty heavy pen. So, you know, uh, and you know, the thing is, is that I needed it today. I forgot my pen and that pen works fine. So it's quite nice. So, you know, that's what's going on here in my neighborhood. And, you know, I, I just keep thinking, I want to go somewhere, I want to go somewhere, I want to go somewhere. And I'm waiting for Bo. She needs to do a few things in the next week or week and a half. And I'm waiting to see if she wants to go. Because she says she does, but I don't know if she does. And uh, just waiting on that. And, uh, and, and then also, you know, I, I kind of want to go somewhere different, somewhere we haven't been, whether it's for a hike, whatever it might be. We, I, I kind of want to go somewhere different. Uh, so I'm, co I'm contemplating where to go, what to do, and it, I'm thinking to go up to Chiang Mai and then come down and go to Pai and go around and do the loop. And I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, whether it's with her or not. I don't know. But we'll do something and get out of Bangkok and yeah, I mean, it's, this is just, this is a concrete jungle. That's what it is. They're, they're, they're not going to be finished. I don't think they're going to be finished for a year. They're not going to have this place cleaned up. They've got the walkway. They're building the walkway to connect up over here to the left, all the way from the station. It's going to walk all the way over. To, uh, to one of the sets of stairs. 
so that you can just walk right into the mall, which will be nice, but it's not happening right now. So it may take a while. So anyway, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody uh, who's just joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Right now, it's 84 degrees, uh, high of 90, low of 79, and the feel-like temperature uh, is 91 degrees. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, guys. How you doing? 76% uh, humidity. It is pretty humid out. It is hot and humid. And not all that comfortable. It's, it's not real comfortable uh, outside. It's, it's kind of miserable. Uh, you know, hot, humid, sticky. It, it's just, you know, it's nice to be inside in the air conditioning. 34.70 watt to the dollar. So uh, things are looking pretty good. As long as they're above 34.5 or so, I'm happy. That's almost 35. I like 35, but I think the reason for, for this is the political turmoil that's going on right now, which is, there's nothing I can do about it, nothing that you can do about it. Most people, they can't do anything about it. You just have to sit it out and wait. And that's fine with me. As long as it doesn't affect me, that's fine with me. But that's what the uh, bot is to the dollar right now. Uh, visibility is 26 kilometers and the air quality index is 38, which is quite good pretty good here uh, can't really ask for a whole lot better than that but uh, yeah they're constantly working here and it's a, it's just a big mess and that's how it goes uh, today we're gonna talk about interesting facts about Thailand that maybe you should know or if you don't know you can you can find out maybe you'll learn a thing or two there's a couple of things you might not know. And uh, I'm here to help you. I'm here to give you some advice, tell you about these things. Tell you things that you need to know. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm here. 26 degrees, okay. Alex uh, sent me a message yesterday. Alex is still in Japan. He'll be there for a couple more days. And he's coming back. And he has to have some dental work. And then maybe, I don't know, he wants to go back to Japan before he starts to work. But we're like, why can't you just go once? And he's like, oh, no, no, but he wants to go back. So, uh, it's very nice. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, good morning. How you doing? Thank you. And we are in Cafe Amazon in the mall. I was the second customer for them. Uh, and uh, you know, it's nice, it's nice I'm here, you know, I'm the second customer. Wow, all right, great. I got myself a cappuccino, I got some water, and they gave me a pen, which is always nice. So, you know, what more can you ask for? Uh, and actually, they're, they're all, they're very eager to please. You know, they, they, they've got their uh, corporate guys here, and, and they're, working behind the counter and I've watched them for the last you know out of the last week or so I've watched them uh, loading things from boxes loading chairs setting the place up and they're very eager and I don't know what it's going to be like over there at Starbucks but it, it doesn't really look like it's going to get done by tomorrow for me so maybe it's another week I don't know maybe it will be done tomorrow but anyway uh, that's what's going on today. That's what's going on over here. I want to get out of here, like I keep saying. And 
you know, I want to go for a hike, a nice long hike, like, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 kilometer hike. I want to get out. I want to, I want to get out of this concrete jungle and go somewhere. Um, but I gotta, I gotta wait for the wife because maybe she'll go. We've got, we've got places to stay in Krabi and in Kochang, and I don't think we're even gonna go there. We're just gonna give it up and, and not go. Because we've been there a million times and we don't really want to go back, you know. Anyway, let's get to the good stuff. Um, oh, but first, hey, but first, don't forget to click the thumbs up, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, uh, hit the join button, the join button, anybody can hit it. And if you're in a place where they don't allow it, then maybe you need a VPN. You know, that's how it works. You can hit that to buck 99, 399, whatever you want to do to help the channel, to help me. Go down in the description at AmericanInBangkok.com. You can get one of my shirts, one of my hats, one of my mugs. You can get a book. I got two, two books that I've written. Uh, you can go to the website and, and, and get one of the books or both of the books there. You can get yourself some, uh, some gear. Uh, and you can also uh, contribute various other ways. Just go down in the description and check everything out. That's how it works. So thank you very much. In advance, you can hit those super chats. That's always nice. Anyway, so let's talk about Thailand. Let's talk about this wonderful country that everybody loves here and everybody wants to come to for whatever reason, for a variety of reasons, cost of living, women, whatever it is. Um, let's talk about that. I don't know if anybody knows here. What is the national symbol of Thailand? And don't look it up, please. A lot of people don't know this. They don't know um, that it's not what you think it is. Anybody? Does anybody know? It's not the usual that you would think. And there's another country that has this same symbol. Uh, it was adopted in 1911, which is 39 years before the other destination, which I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, but this symbol is not what you think it would be. So nobody knows. Nobody knows the symbol. I'm a little surprised. I thought maybe somebody might know, but I guess not. It's the Garuda. It's a half bird, half man symbol. And Indonesia has the same type of symbol. It's the same, it's a Garuda. That's why Garuda Airlines. Nobody knows. All right, the Garuda is the national symbol of Thailand. It's also the Garuda Pencasila is also the national uh, emblem of Indonesia. Uh, in Thailand, like I said, it was officially adopted as the national emblem by uh, by King Rama VI in 1911. And it's depicted on seals, it's all over the place, and you may not even realize it. 
There are a number of seals, and this is the main seal. This is the official emblem. Uh, it was further regulated in 1991. It is the coat of arms. It is their, it's their symbol. So this is what you, it's not an elephant. It's not, you know, a tiger. It's, it's nothing like that. It's the Garuda which is a half man, half bird. And if you look at the one in Indonesia, it looks more like a bird. Uh, and theirs is, let me see here, what does it say? I forgot what the deal was, let's see here. The aim, uh, the, let's see here, a comparative study of the Garuda will help to enhance the, uh, let's see here, will help to advance the values. Okay, uh, methodically, blah, 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 blah. Let me see here. King is an incarnation of the god Vishnu, and that's prevalent in Indonesia and Thailand. However, uh, where was it that I saw it? Let's see. As the vehicle of Vishnu, Garuda also bears the attributes of Vishnu, which symbolize the preservation of cosmic order. Uh, okay, so this is one of the reasons why Indonesia's founding fathers, 1950, adopted this image as the national emblem, while in Thailand the symbol of Garuda is always associated with the Institute of Kingship. Therefore, the symbol of Garuda stands for something sacred and holy. This is not the case in Indonesia, where the symbol of Garuda is seen more as the symbol of virtue. So that's something that maybe some of you know, maybe some of you don't know, I don't know. Uh, I'm telling you right now, that's, that's the deal. And, um, that's first on the list, in case you don't know, facts, interesting facts about Thailand. Uh, Thailand was voted the world's first, fifth, the world's fifth friendliest country by the rough guy. The fifth friendliest country. What is the first through fourth? I don't know, let me see. Can I, can I tell you these things? Uh, let's see here. Next door to me is the Moss Burger, which uh, is not very good. Okay, well, Let's see here, now, when was this? I don't know when it was, but now it's number two. So, it's gone up. Ireland is number one. Canada is number three, Italy is number four, Greece is number five, Japan number six, New Zealand number seven, Portugal number eight, USA number nine, Turkey is number 10. Wow. Those are the friendliest countries. This is this is as of May 17th, 2023. Uh, Japan is number six. So there you go. It's number six. And I agree, J Japanese are very friendly. Uh, they're very committed to their friends. And uh, you know, Alex is telling me he's having a great time, so for what that's worth. All right. It is illegal to drive shirtless in Thailand. Did you guys know that? It's illegal to, dr to drive shirtless in Thailand. And uh, let me tell you, there's one other thing that goes along with this, and that is that in Thailand, it is illegal to leave your house without underwear on. So you're not allowed to wear, you're, you're, you're not allowed to not wear underwear when you go out. No going commando style. Uh, here in Thailand. I don't make the rules.
Thailand was actually known as Siam until 1939 and again from 1945 to 49 before they changed it to Thailand, which means land of the free. That's what it means. Um, 77 provinces in Thailand. Now there is a song and I don't know what it is. I don't, you know, I, I can't say I can name all the provinces. But I can name a large number of them. But I'd forget some of them. I'd probably mix a few things up. Uh, but really, uh, you know, as long as you know most of them, you're, you're in good shape. But there is a song that they teach kids early um, as they're growing up. Uh, that teaches them to remember all of the the provinces. Yeah, I don't know, you know, underwear checkpoints, yeah. Uh, are you wearing underwear, sir? Madam, are you wearing panties? Or is it just for men? Let me see. No, it doesn't say it's just for men. It says it's illegal to leave your house without underwear on. I don't know how they're checking. I don't know, you know, what the deal is with that, but like I said, I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you in Thailand, you are supposed to be wearing underwear all the time. So you can't just decide you want to go out and ladies, you can't just go out and I don't know. Can you go out in a bikini? Can you go out in a bikini without underwear? On? I don't know why you can't. But really, if you're wearing a bikini, you're not wearing underwear. If you're a man and you're wearing a swimsuit and it has the mesh on the inside, because I have a couple like that, you don't usually wear underwear. You just, you freewheel it. And that is your underwear. The mesh is the underwear, so to speak. So I don't know, does that count? I don't know, has anybody ever been arrested for this for this law? I don't know. I don't really think so, but... Siamese cats are native to Thailand, in case you don't know. Now, does anybody know how long Thailand's coastline is? Does anybody have any idea how big their... Uh, your coastlines. Anybody. Water's only 15 baht. Not bad. I'm out there, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute of it. Very good. Uh, the coastline of Thailand, for those who don't know, is 3,219 kilometers long, which is about 2,000 miles. Um, I don't know. I don't know. All right, now, I got this one, and most people know. I don't know. Does anybody know... Bangkok's real name because I mean I know some of it I can never remember the whole thing so I always got to look at it but Bangkok is not the real name of this city this is the given name and the real name is Kuntep Mahanakon Amon Ratanakosin Mahintara Ayutthaya Mahadilo Pop Napararot Napararat Rajatani Uri Rom Udom Raj Chani Wit Mahasatan Amon Piman Awatin Satip Sak Sakata Titia Wit Sanu Kam Prasit. That is Bangkok's real name. It is the longest name in the world for a city. Which is probably why they don't use it. <clears throat> uh, the brothers Eng and Chang Bunker 
inspired the term Siamese twins as they were co-joined twins and they were joined at the chest. They died in 1873. Eng and Chang Bunker. How long did they live? I'm curious about that. Nobody talks about them. Well, they lived a long life. I think they both were married, too. They were uh, 63 years old when they died. They were two of the 19th century's most studied human beings. Yeah, they had children. They had all kinds of things here. Chang's wife was Adelaide Yates and Eng's wife was Sarah Yates. Chang had 10 children and Eng had 8 children. How did they do that? Conflicts on tour. Uh, oh, okay. Ooh. see here. Wow, they were, they were involved in quite a bit of little conflicts. People gave them a hard time. So what I want to know is, this is touring. They toured. That's how they made money. They made, made money this way. Twins' financial uh, status suffered after the Civil War. They had lent money that was repaid in worthless Confederate currency and their slaves were emancipated, so they decided to resume, resume touring. Wow. Let's see here. Let's see. He was the... Chang was the wealthier of the two. I, man, I don't understand how they do this. How were they having sex with their wives with the other one, like, not watching? <laughs> how did they do that? Or did they? Was one of them sleeping? It's interesting. Inquiring minds want to know. Anyway. All right. That was something else. That was something else going on there. Let's see here. Around 90% of Thailand is Buddhist, which strikes me as a little bit strange because there are a lot of Muslims in Thailand, a lot more than you might think, but I don't know, maybe it is only 8 or 9%, I don't know. Uh, at least where I live here, eh, maybe it is 10%. I don't know. I'm thinking here, and it seems to be about 10%. It is illegal to step on any Thai currency, and that is something that has happened before. Uh, certain people have, on YouTube, we'll say, they have uh, stepped on currency and been reprimanded by the Thai government. Good morning, good morning. Uh, and because of that, uh, they actually... They, they got, this person got in quite a bit of trouble. Uh, but, you know, now everything's good, I, I guess. But that's something else. You can't step on Thai money. Thailand, as I said, means the land of the free. Thais must always keep their head lower than that of anyone older or more important than them. Uh, generally, it is fairly normal. If you're walking in between people, like, not in the mall or something like that but if you're somewhere and you have to cross in between two people you generally bend down and get lower than they are that's the polite way to go about doing things it's not all the time i don't know you know if you're in a setting like the mall where you're just walking by people all the time you don't have to do it but that's how it goes a thai woman lived for 33 days and nights in a glass room full of scorpions setting a new record. Now, why would you do that? 
for what reason? I don't really know um, why you would why would you sit in a room just to say I did it? It's like staying in a room full of snakes or a room full of tarantulas. Or, I don't know. I guess just to say you did it and stand out from the crowd. That, that's the only thing I can think. It makes no sense to me. Uh, in Thailand, yes might mean no. Uh, When a Thai person does say no, it is a no. There is no, it really means yes. They say no, I don't want to. That's what it means. Um, yes may mean probably. It may mean no. Which makes it kind of hard to determine what they're saying. Um, sometimes they'll say yes and then they just won't show up. Uh, and that is so that they don't have to disappoint you, which strikes me as odd. I, I don't understand why it is. Uh, let's see here. You know, like I said, you don't want to touch somebody's head, a younger person's head. You don't want to be sticking your feet up. You don't want to be showing the bottom of your feet. You don't want to do these things. And you don't want to point like this don't want to do that. Uh, it's better to just be like this. That's what you usually do. So that that's something that's actually pretty a pretty big one here. You don't see a lot of ties pointing on except maybe when you're getting arrested. Um, but generally, the ties will allow that faux pas to go uh, uncorrected because many foreigners will will go ahead and point. They just do that. So that's something else to think about. Uh, now, uh, let's see here. Thailand is about the size of Texas. I think most people know that. I think a lot of people know that. I don't know. Uh, let me see here. This is pretty uh, The world's largest golden boot is found right over in Chinatown at the Wat Tri Mi. I've been there many times. The last time I went there, well, the last time I went there was the other day. I went by there. And I decided not to go in because I didn't feel like dealing with everything. The time before that was at the beginning of when COVID hit and it was closed down. They closed the temple. Nobody could get, nobody could come in. Uh, it weighs almost six tons and stands some three meters tall. Let's see here. Now this one, this is something, I don't know why it says this, but this is just something. Thai food differs greatly depending on where it is made in the region. For example, Isan dishes are spicy, while central region dishes are sweeter. Regardless, Thai food is short to pleasure even the pickiest of palates. This is the thing about Thai food that people don't understand. If you don't want spicy Thai food, you don't have to have spicy Thai food. Most of the time, they'll put the spice on the side. They won't make it spicy. You know. You can have it how you want it. Pretty important. I mean, you know, you're not going to Chinatown having duck with all kinds of spice on it. Uh, many Thais drink ice with their beer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, this is something that... I don't know if any of you guys know this, but you should. I mean, this is something that goes back to uh, the days of when Chinese merchants were traveling around and selling everything. And this is, this is how things got done here, is that the canals were, uh, the, canals were the, the method of transport. Bangkok was even known as the Venice of the East and uh, 
many of these were filled in to make way for infrastructure and the urban decor seen here today. However, they're starting to try to connect all the canals back together again. It may take some time. I don't know exactly what they're doing, where it's happening, but I know that they are trying to connect up at least some of these canals so that it's a, it's you have that option. It's like we can take the SkyTrain or I can take the boat. If you want to take the boat, the boat is 20 baht to go uh, down, I think, to the to the first to the section where you transfer. I think it's 20 baht. Uh, now it used to be like 18 or something like that, but you can go all the way down You can go all the way down to Kaosan Road Almost to Kaosan Road. You have to walk a little ways to take a motorbike But if you take the yellow line You can get down there Close to there and then you know take another method of transport But it's gonna take you a couple of a couple of uh, couple of trains you're gonna have to transfer and that's how it is here you know you could take the taxi it'll take you door to door you can just go right wherever you want it's gonna cost you if you've got four people it might cost you 150 bucks 150 baht so that's fine but if you got one person you gotta pay 150 baht then you get on the sky train and it'll cost you uh, maybe it'll cost you 45 baht plus it'll cost another say 40 baht to go somewhere it might cost you 85 baht instead of 150 baht and you're like well for you that might be a lot of money or you know you don't want to spend the money you just want to relax you don't want to be in traffic and depending on where you get on you might have the train might be relatively empty you can get it you can get your own seat and then you know after a couple of stops it starts to fill up and you're just sitting there it's fine and that happens to me all the time So the canals are big, and I think they're going to get bigger in the future. They do have electric boats in several areas. They have an electric boat back here in Minbury, and they have it over there by Bow Bay. Um, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the, the, the name of the canal, but it runs over by Bow Bay. Uh, Thailand's late... King, King Bumipon Aduliadej was the world's richest monarch. He was the only one to have ever been born in the United States and since his passing, the country has entered into a state of mourning. They're not in it anymore. Uh, here's something, you know, if you don't know this, you're really out there. You're really not, uh, you really don't know what's up. But the inventor of Red Bull was Thai, Kriting Dang. Uh, and with an Australian entrepreneur, uh, they, they became partners, the Thai and the Australian, and now Red Bull is huge. It's all over the world. And the formula is a little bit different here in Thailand. Some people like the Thai formula better. I don't drink it anymore. Uh, I used to drink Red Bull M150. Uh, I didn't really drink Carabao Dang too much, but I used to drink all these little energy drinks. But, you know, to me, they don't really give you all that much energy. You might as well have a cup of coffee. That's how I look at it. You know, and if you're that tired, wake up. Slap some water on your face. I just don't, I just don't want to drink it because it's not very good for you if you drink it long term. And you're drinking it all the time and you're drinking like five a day like some people will drink five or ten of those things a day they're drinking them like every hour uh, Thai food is influenced by China Laos and Myanmar some of the popular dishes like Patsy Yu introduced to the country by neighborhoods neighboring ones which is interesting and uh, uh, true but you know I'm sure that uh, in Thailand, uh, they influence a lot of other countries as well. Yeah, the guy, the son is still, uh, he's still in exile. Okay, now this one, if you don't know this one, 
I don't know what to say. Thai women use the word ka, men use the word cup after everything, and we mean everything. It is another way for Thai people uh, to be polite. They will even use it among friends. Uh, yeah, they use it among friends, and you know, it's not like, like when I talk to my wife, I don't generally say cop, 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 and she doesn't usually say ka, ka, ka. It, it just doesn't work that way. We don't do that. And we try to be polite to each other most of the time, you know, most of the time. Um, so, you know, there it is there. That's something that most people, they learn that right when they come to time. You, this, that's one of the first things you learn. Uh, Bangkok is the number one visited city in the world. I don't know if that's the case right now, but it's one of uh, the top cities of the world, it's visited by more people than just about anywhere. That's something else. If you don't know this also, if you know anything about Thailand, you know it hasn't been colonized by a European country. They haven't opened up Moss Burger yet, which is probably a good thing. Few public places have restrooms or t uh, toilet paper. Thank you very much, Andy. Coffee time. I got my coffee right here. Thank you. Very good. Appreciate it. I'm just waiting for your plane there, huh? Just waiting on a plane. Leaving on a jet plane. Bum guns are used in lieu of paper. Okay. People who do not want to use the bum gun must bring their own toilet paper. That doesn't happen all that often. I don't see that very often, although some foreigners might do that. I don't know. This lady's got a Nirvana shirt on. Uh, many toilets in Thailand ask those who use them not to flush toilet paper. Apparently, not all of the sewage systems can handle the paper. That's just, a lot of places on the planet ask you not to flush the toilet paper, which I think is kind of disgusting. Let me just put my shitty paper right over here. Uh, you know, it's kind of nasty if you think about it, but that's how it is here. Now, if you've got the bum gun, and even if you got just a bucket with the scoop, you can just scoop the water and pour it down your backside. After a little while, you get used to it. It's not a big deal. You know, you, you make do with what you have. The bum gun is wonderful. How can I, how can I get that point across? The, the bum gun is far better than toilet paper. If you have not installed a bidet or a bum gun or a hose even, in your house, then you need to do it. Because I can tell you that the United States is missing out. And the reason they're missing out is because, uh, when was it? Back, God, it was, I think it was hundreds of years ago, prostitution was big. Well, I guess it was in the Old West where prostitution was very big in the United States. And the water was thought of as a way to keep clean so that the uh, prostitutes were clean. Not your bum. Why, I don't know. And for some reason it caught on that using water to clean yourself was associated with prostitutes and so in the US it hasn't taken off now I mean I don't know I don't know if more water is used with a bum gun I think it gets recycled at least the majority of it uh, than with toilet paper and yeah, I don't know, and I don't understand what the problem is. To me, it's much more hygienic 
than if you're using toilet paper. So listen, if you haven't used toilet paper, uh, if you're using toilet paper, you haven't used the bum gun, use the bum gun. Jesus, give it a try. When you go back home, you're not going to want to use toilet paper. It's just so nasty to me. It's the nastiest thing that you can actually think about. I mean, yeah, I don't even know. Now, they have, I just see over here, they have some electrical box or something like that, and it says M. Cortier. Why it says M. Cortier, I have no idea. Maybe it came from the M. Cortier. I guess it's owned by the same place. They're doing a lot of things here. I'll, I'll, I will say that. They're doing a lot of things here. I don't know that I agree with some of them. Some of the shops they have, they have shops that are going up in the, the very front is predominantly food. So as soon as you walk in, boom, you can eat. Which to me doesn't matter because they're KFC, McDonald's, Starbucks, Swenson's, Cafe Amazon, Moss Burger, which I think Moss Burger is, I give it a miss. But then the next row back is like all beauty supplies. Maybe they did a study and they found that beauty supplies are the biggest selling item in this mall. I don't know. But there are a lot of shops. I've never seen these shops before. I don't, I haven't got any clue what's on the second floor, third floor, fourth floor. I don't know what's going on up there. They haven't let it out. And I asked the girl the other day, when is Starbucks opening up? And she goes, uh, I don't know. I had to ask beer ask beer when they're going to open them. She told me the 10th, but it, it, you know, like I said, it doesn't really look like the 10th is the day where it's going to open up. So that's why I'm in Cafe Amazon. And actually their coffee's pretty good. The cappuccino is pretty good. Most of the time the espresso is hit or miss. Flight just arrived, 30 minute delay. Well, that's not too bad. There's four people working here. They have four people here. And then plus they have a manager or something sitting over there. Don't forget to upsell. You gotta upsell. Then there's a, 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 this girl's just sitting here. Just minding her own business. This is a place, you know, it's eight o'clock. So if you wanna come in here, um, you know, you might as well. You want to come here, you got something to do in the morning and you don't want to go into the mall. You're waiting to come to the mall or you're waiting to go somewhere and you got to wait a little while, whatever. That's what that's what this is for. You come to the coffee shop, you sit here, you have yourself a cup, you have yourself some water, you squeeze every last drop out of it, whatever. I think my cup is done now. Well, there's, there's some coffee in there. Pretty much done now. I'm assuming you're talking about why they don't look at the bum gun in a different way. They always go, isn't your ass all wet? I'm like, really? That's all you think about? Once you spray everything away, you can just pat dry yourself if you have to. Anybody who's used a bum gun that I know except Chucky, and Chucky, when it comes to a bum gun, he's just a knucklehead. He's like, why do I gotta use it? Ugh. No, it's not used to clean the bathroom. You can use it to clean the bathroom. That's not what it's for, though. It's to clean your undercarriage. And his thinking, to me, is so backwards. He doesn't get it, and I'm like, oh, God. And, you know, still to this day, I imagine he's still using toilet paper. He's not using the bum gun. I think he's tried it once or twice, but he just said, how do I do this? Oh, God. You know. So, for people who are not in the know with it, get in the know. Learn how to use it. It doesn't take much to figure it out. 
If you got half a brain, you can figure out how to spray your ass. That's what I would say. I mean, that is, to me, that is the biggest no-brainer. Across the street, we have, there he goes, boom, right there. Unbelievable. Yeah, Japanese toilets are always a marvel. They're wonderful. I know Alex loves them. You know, uh, those little things, those, the things are like powder, your, powder yourselves, it'll spray perfume there, it'll do pretty much whatever you need. They're fantastic. They, they really are fantastic. And that's what I mean. If you're in the U.S. and you've got halfway decent... Uh, listen, do I have to kick you out? Everything you're saying is a bunch of just nonsense, really. Please. Please. to say about that. I don't know, you know, I, I'm not going to beg any of you to use the bum gun, but that is the one thing about Thailand you need to know. Use the water. Use the bum gun. Learn how to, learn how to use it. It's not that difficult. Somebody can show you without any, uh, without doing anything. Somebody could show you. You could have a woman show you. You can have your girlfriend show you, your wife show you, when you're like, you know, when you're not doing anything onto the toilet. She just shows you, hey, this is basically how you do it. It's a no-brainer. When Chuck told me that he thought that it was for the ladies to clean the bathroom, I just went, ugh. Honestly, I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, go ahead and get it done. Please, get it done. Uh, let's see what else. I already talked about the scorpion lady. What else? The whole toilet paper thing. That just it just it rubs me the wrong way. Bangkok is the hottest city in the world. I did not know this, but the capital has the highest consistent temperatures year round. The hottest temperature ever recorded in Thailand was on April 27th, 1960 in Uttaradit. Temperatures generally reach around 44 degrees Celsius or 112 Fahrenheit. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what this means. Thais use the same word to say both hello and goodbye. Um, yeah, I mean, that's true, but, uh, you can also say, you know, on. you can say choke D, you can say jerk and my, there's a lot of things you can say, so this is not, uh, it doesn't really matter. There are ways to get around using Sawat D as hello and goodbye, I mean, it's, I don't generally hear a lot of people saying that. It does happen, but I don't hear a lot of people saying that. Um, so, yeah. Many Thais are superstitious and believe in ghosts. And I gotta tell you, um, my wife is not the most religious person. Thank you very much, Tom. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. Choke me to you and to Andy. I really appreciate it. It really helps. And uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. 
money is the fuel that runs the engine. That's what it is. The more money I make, uh, the more I travel, the more I go around, the more places I see, the more I do, and I bring it to you guys. And if I, and if you look at this channel, I hate to say this, but if you look at the channel, I've been on for, um, has it been 10 years now? Yeah, it's been 10 years I've been on my From the beginning to now, I've been to literally hundreds of places. I've gone to Chinatown many times over. I've been to Klong Tui. I've been all over Bangkok. I've done everything in Bangkok that you can do, pretty much. I've been all over Thailand. I've been all over Southeast Asia. So, you get your money's worth. That's, that's my point. You know, most people will get their money's worth. You know, and so I really appreciate those people that help me. And the people that don't help me, you know, maybe they can't or whatever the reason is, that's fine. But, um, you know, I mean, I've been to Burma, Cambodia, Nepal, Bangladesh. I'm trying to think. Me, me and, I've been to Burma, Myanmar, Laos, Vietnam. I, I don't think I videotaped in China. Well, I had a little bit of footage, but that was it. But I did go to China twice. Where else? Um, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, all over Southeast Asia. Numerous times. And then I've been to the United States a couple of times, been to Ecuador, been to Ireland, been to Portugal. Where else did we go? Portugal. Uh, I can't even think, I can't even remember all the places that I've been. So please keep that in mind. You know, it's not like I sit here in the coffee shop every single day for years on end and this is what I do. This is my studio, this is my office. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. The other day I went to, uh, where did I go? Kutichin for the second time, the Portuguese area. Uh, by the river, I went to Sarni's over there, very nice coffee shop. So, yeah, I can't even, I cannot even think, I'm trying to think right now, of all the places that I've been over the years, um, which I'm looking at right now. Oh, for everybody who saw Jake Paul against Nate Diaz, you know, I just don't like Jake Paul very much. I really don't like him very much. And... Nate Diaz is older, and you know, he, he doesn't care. He's just sitting there, he'll take a beating and just keep on going. And he came pretty close to hurting um, Jake Paul. I mean, he hurt him, or stung him with a couple of punches. And you know, he didn't win, but like, Jake Paul should have trounced him, and he didn't, which doesn't surprise me. All right, let me see here. I'm looking here. Where are the playlists? Content playlists. Playlists, here we go. Oh, I've been to Hong Kong numerous times, getting shot at. Every time I went, I got shot at. I got shot at with bullets, I got shot at with rubber bullets, I got shot at with all kinds of things. Ecuador, been down in Chumpon, uh, Laos, Vietnam, Pattaya. Let's see here. Bangladesh, Chiang Mai. See you later, Andy. Take it easy, I hope you have a good flight. Maybe you can, well, I don't think you can meet up with Alex now, but that's fine. Hong Kong, Bangladesh, Hanoi to Ho Chi Minh, Khao Sok. I walked across Thailand, Khao Chan. Uh, 
uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, Bali, America. So those are just a few of the places that I've gone, that I've been. Lots of people coming in here. I have a feeling this is going to be a very popular, uh, this is going to be a very popular location here. Everybody doesn't want to go to Starbucks. I mean, I'd rather spend, to be completely honest, I'll go to Starbucks when they first open up, but you know, to be completely honest, sometimes I'm like, you know what, I can just, two 20 baht bills, boom, I got myself a coffee. I go to Starbucks, it's, you know, 100 baht, 110 baht. It's almost three times the price. And their coffee is not that much better. I mean, really, it's not a boutique coffee. This is not a boutique place. This is just your everyday coffee. And uh, it's it's fine. Starbucks is fine too, but not for 110 baht for a little coffee. It's the same price as it is in the U.S. So those are a few of the places that I've been. So thank you very much. Um, like I said, a lot of the people in Thailand believe in ghosts. Uh, my wife is not really religious or superstitious, but she does believe in ghosts. And sometimes she'll tell me, I was in bed and I woke up and so-and-so was, you know, looking at me and they were talking to me and I just go, okay, you know. Uh, Man Nak is the most popular ghost in Thailand. She died after giving childbirth. She refused to cross over after death and killed anyone in her village who tried to warn her husband that she was a ghost. Okay. Some Thais believe they will receive good luck if they set animals free, which is why they have the caged birds. Again, to each his own. Vixter, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wow. All right. Excellent goal. He scores. Appreciate that very much. Uh, and like I said, it really helps. I appreciate it. And uh, very soon, something is going to happen. I'm not sure where I'm going to go. I, I'm really, I'm taking my time and looking around to find somewhere good where I can do a lot of things and that's why I like the, the Mei Hong Son loop because I can go to four or five different places uh, but I'm not sure about that yet you know I do like it it looks good uh, I don't think I'd be bored you know and I can go on a, a hike or two the wife can go on a hike or two. If she wants to come back home, she can. I can just continue on. However we want to do it. Uh, I don't want to go out of the country, but I do want to go somewhere in Thailand. And I'm not sure where it is. You know, when am I ever? You know, uh, what is this? ATM? Is the person who catches and cages the birds to be released at perpetual bad karma for catching the birds. You got me, man. I don't know. I don't think so because I think it's his, it's it's a job, you know. He's doing what he has to do. So I think he's he uh, is exempt. He has an exemption clause. I don't know. Now, I will say this, for the last week, uh, I have not been feeling well. I've been sick. I've had an upset stomach. I've had, you know, uh, just really achy, feverish, and I just haven't felt like doing much, and I haven't gone to my yoga class. Well, today is, the, I still feel a little queasy right now, but I'm gonna go and do my class today. It's the first day back. I still, my weight is holding good. Um, I'm just about at the lowest weight that I've been, so that's good. 
and uh, yeah, soon I will be lower than that weight. That's my goal. So that when I travel, I'm below my lowest weight, and I can keep my weight off that way. Because generally when I travel, I don't eat all that much. You know, I might have a little snack or something. I might have uh, something, and then maybe I'll have one meal a day. That's about it. So, something good to think about. Knives are not a thing in Thailand. If you don't know it, most of the time when you eat, you eat with a fork and a spoon. Sometimes you eat with a knife, but most of the time, fork and spoon, that's something else. Uh, spirit houses are small temples on mounts. What is it called? It's a uh, ban, no, uh, something, papum, sak, papum, I forget what it's called. Uh, but there are spirit houses all over the place. What I'm wondering, honestly, now I don't know why I'm thinking about that, thinking about this. Why are the, why is the sign for the mall, why have they not changed it yet? The mall looks like a wreck. It doesn't look better. I mean, maybe it's too soon. Maybe I'm expecting too much. Maybe, really. They haven't changed the sign. It's the same, like, 50-year-old sign or whatever 40-year-old sign they have up. The walkways are not beautiful. I, I don't know. Maybe I just expect too much. Maybe, maybe uh, they're going to have some places that look really modern, really new, really nice, and maybe they'll have other portions of the mall that, and around the mall, that they look subpar, we'll say. All right, so, you know, the spirit houses, those are nice. You always have the spirit houses that have, uh, that have the little uh, tigers, or they have zebras, or they have bottles of uh, Fanta. They have all kinds of different things. Um, and uh, they're the norm, you know, those are the norm. Let's see here. The mall doesn't have great curb appeal. No, it doesn't. Uh, I, you know, they don't really, if you think about it, I'm thinking right now, there's one entrance to go towards the back, and the other entrance is one way, right now at least, it's one way. So you only have one way to come in and to go park, which is terrible. Why would you only have one entrance? And I think that most of the time, it's only one entrance. So I don't think that the entrance is good. It's good that they have the, uh, the boat in the back. So if you want to take the boat, you can take the boat and just get off and come right in. You know, I mean, you're not right. You're at the back of the mall and you walk in. It takes you like two minutes to walk in. Now they're building a bridge over to the side that goes all the way from the uh, from the station into the mall, but it's not done yet. You know, I think I think they've made some progress, but I don't know how long it'll be done because they still have all kinds of uh, wraps on the outside so that you can't see in, and they have just it's just it's just a mess. That's that's all I can say. I mean. I expect, I mean, I really, for what they're doing, I expect a lot. I admit that. I expect a lot here. And maybe it's going to take another year. Maybe it'll take another two years. Maybe I won't be here to see it. I don't know. I have no idea. But I can tell you that right now it doesn't look all that great. You know, they got the, they got the food court open up. And they got, now they have the bottom section open. There are some places open up on the bottom. But other than that, forget about it. It's just not that great. It does. There's not great curb appeal. There is appeal to get off on the Sky Train and walk right in, or walk down for now, walk down and walk in. That's the appeal. 
hey, if you want to stop on the SkyTrain and get off and go shopping at the Mall Bankabee, you can. You know, some, I mean, maybe I'm spoiled. Because a lot of people really like this mall. They're like, oh my God, it's such a nice mall. It's so great there. And they've got everything. Well, they don't have everything. You don't have Dolce Gabbana. This is not an upscale mall. You know, you, you, you don't have, uh, what's the, what, what am I thinking of? You know, you barely have like Omega watches or Rolex. You don't have any Rolexes. There's no Rolexes. You don't have designer clothes. You, you don't. You might have some Nike. So, what they're trying to do to this place, I don't know if, if they put in a few really high-end stores. Maybe it'll bring the place up, but I just don't get what they're doing, which is kind of like the Happy Land. Happy Land is a place, they're selling 20 bot clothes in Happy Land. Happy Land. Anywhere from 20 to 100 bot, you got clothes over there. Now, is that a place where people who have a lot of money go to go shopping? Maybe, but most of the time I don't think so. Why do I want to buy 20 bot clothing, 20 bot shirts, 40 bot shirts? Why do I want that? I don't. So then what do I want to go shopping there for? Well, generally, I don't. So it's not a high-end destination. And I have a feeling they're trying to make the mall a higher-end destination. I don't know if they can. That's what I'm going to say. I don't know that they can do this. I don't know they can pull it off. I want to see when they're finished, what does it look like. And I, I'm looking right across the street here. And if you look across the street, the buildings across the street are kind of dilapidated and run down. So, you know, and you've got all these people walking around. They got their, uh, they got their helmets on. They're all dressed up. They've got little name tags on. And they're, you know, I don't know what some of these people are doing. Some of the people are just laborers. And like I said, I thought, you know, I was told that the mall would be, that Starbucks at the mall would be done on the 28th. I mean, the, uh, the 8th, I'm sorry. Not the 8th. Is it the 10th? Yeah, the 10th. 28th, 8th, 10th, big difference, the 10th. And then I think Beer is already in there working on the mall. She's helping get it set up. But when I looked in this morning, I looked and I just went, wow, there's a lot of things not done. The counters are not done. The chairs are not put in. There's a lot of work to be done. So maybe they're behind schedule. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. And, uh... You know, that's, that's, what else can I say? The area appears to be middle class, working class, not the Gucci crowd. I don't think that the market would support an upscale mall there. Yeah, I don't think so either, and I think you're right. I think it is a middle class mall. Um, uh, I don't, you know, I can say middle class, but middle class to who? Middle class to where? When I go in the grocery, the grocery is not middle class. You want to buy good food in the grocery. Every time I go into the grocery, I will piss away at least a thousand. I go and buy a coffee. If I want to buy some Illy, it's either, it's about 350 baht, anywhere between 350 and 700 baht, depending on what you buy. You can get some Lavazza or something like that, and it's 550, 600 baht. That's almost 20 bucks. That's like, what, 17, 18 bucks, something like that. For coffee, it doesn't last you all that long. And I guess maybe the price is a little better than back in the U.S. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, you can say, well, it's imported. Yeah, it's imported. Everything's imported. Except everything here that is made in Thailand. And, you know, I'm looking at the little cakes and candy. I looked the other the donuts are the same price as they are at Starbucks. The donuts are the same price here as they are at Starbucks. Then they have a three pack of donuts, it's 55 baht. Two donuts, 70 to 80 baht. So, you know, prices are going up and that's just how it goes. The prices are going up.
everywhere you go. And the thing is, is my surroundings are not any better. In my village, the village, in my house, that's what we worry about. Our house. We try to keep it fairly clean. Hey, Bruce, how you doing? Uh, other than in the village, which is really, the village is not too bad. The village is pretty good for the most part. It's fairly clean. Nobody allows their house to get filthy with garbage all over the place. Nobody allows them. So when I go into my village, I like that I go into my village and I go into my house and everything is, you know, things might be messy, but it's clean now. I like that. But once you go out of the village, forget about it. It's a mess. And, you know, I can complain about it being a mess or I can just say, you know, this is how it is. And that's, this is exactly how it is. I mean, I don't know about you, Bruce, but, you know, sometimes, or, or Jim, you know, when you go out to a certain area, you go, you know, it is what it is. I'm looking right now, you got a 50-year-old bus driving by. Do we really, I mean, do we, we don't need to have new things all the time. But if they want this place to be more modern and upscale, then they need to put some money into it. Just put a, put a paint a coat on the put a paint a coat onto the onto the bus. Do something like that. I don't know. So what's happening, Bruce? What's happening in your neck of the woods? Have you been to the mall lately? Which is where I am. All right, now this guy's out there cleaning up. Look at this. He's out there mopping up. Cleaning the place up, cleaning all the leaves up. That's nice. It's very nice. And, you know, maybe this place is going to be fantastic. I can see if you look out a little bit, you can see that there are uh, planting pots of... Uh, I don't know what these plants are, but they're planting things. So... That's a good thing. Seacon Square, okay. I almost went there uh, the other day, and instead I went to uh, Central World. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I could have went to Seacon. I could have went to... It didn't really matter where I went. I just was heading in the direction. I go, and I go to Central World. You want to come to Bank of... Well, it's a little different. And, you know, some things you might go, oh, that's really nice. Like when I first walked into the food court, you know, the floors are not all done. I'm like, why don't you make the floors done before you open up? People don't have to walk and almost break their ankle in certain areas. But they're working. And the, the number, they have 40 stores there. 40 uh, little restaurants, little kiosks or whatever you want to call it. And some of them are quite good. They, listen, I had some halal food the other day. It was some uh, chicken curry. And I was like, all right, can't wait. It's going to be so good. They gave me a little bowl that was about, about that big. That's about how big it was. About like that. I had about four or five bites and it was done. And I just go... And they wouldn't let you use the, they couldn't, you couldn't scan, you had to pay with cash. And I was like, now I gotta go to the ATM, and they don't even have any ATMs in the mall right now. I don't think there's any ATMs opened up in the mall yet. There might be, somewhere. They have some places open up on the second and third floor. So if you're gonna get your money, you have to get it on the Happy Land side, which you can get on the second floor. You know, you, you're going to need that if you need the cash. So I was like, okay, I need some cash. So I went over, got my money, came back, had plenty of money. You know, get my little coupons. And then when you have your coupons left over, um, you get your money back. Which, you know, which means I got to go and, oh, I've got to go retrieve my money now. Or you lose the money after a day or whatever it is. Yeah, um... 
Yeah, exactly. It's shrinkflation. Now, what I will say is, you know, I got a mineral water here at Cafe Amazon, 500 milliliters, 15 baht. It used to be 10 baht quite some time ago, but it's 15 baht. At least they give you 500 milliliters. At Starbucks, they will charge you 25 baht, and they'll give you 450 milliliters. So I know I'm nitpicking about some of these things, but you know, this is how it happens. One little thing happens and then you have, oh, oh, that's, that's okay. And then a little bit later, oh, this little thing happened. And then, oh, this little thing, before you know it, you got 10 little things that have happened. You can't get into the mall on the second floor. You can't go up on the second floor anywhere and get in. So. Every time you come out, every time you, you uh, leave, you either have to get a taxi and drive home, which means you're gonna pay money, of course, uh, and that's more a little more expensive. Or you have to go and you have to go out and you have to go up and walk up the stairs, walk over, go across, go down the other stairs. You know, it's just, they make it to where it's inconvenient instead of convenient. Things are supposed to be more convenient, not less convenient. So I guess maybe six months of pain is what they think. They think six months of pain will make everything good for everybody and everybody will be happy or the, most people will be happy and then, you know, we'll go on our merry way. I don't know. But that's what's going on here at the mall. And uh, we've already talked about some interesting facts about Thailand that you ought to know or you should know, or you may already know. So now you get to hear some things about the Mall Bon Um You know, the yellow line is great. It's great. It only goes to Lot Brown. It goes to Lot Brown. I don't know how far it goes this way. Um, but I took it the other day and I went to Sidon. Uh, that's where I went, and I think it went a couple of stops past that. I don't see it being done in two months. I see some of the things being done, but I see a lot of things still being unfinished. I think it may take them a year to finish things up. I mean, you know, the roads are largely unfinished. Uh, yeah, to go to Samron. I think it's a couple of stops past where I went. Um, and that was 45 baht. And I don't get 50% off on this because it's run by the BTS. Which I love the MRT for that. I love the MRT for what they do where they, they don't have a problem where they differentiate between ties and foreigners. When are these people going to learn? When you differentiate between people, it makes you feel like you're a second class citizen. Even though I know I'm not. You know. But, you know, that's the way it goes. I've got all my cards. Where are my cards here? I've got my cards here. I've got my little cards here. I've got my rabbit card. That's for the BTS. I've got my MRT. Elder card, which is fantastic, and I've got my CityLink card. Why they can't make one card is another inconvenience. We just well, well, we don't need to. Why you can have three cards? I don't want three cards. I wish I could just use an app. You know, in in Hong Kong, when you get on this, when you get into places, they got the Octopus card. I don't even need to take it out of my wallet. I can just tap and boom, it's done. Here, you have to take it out, you have to put it in your pocket, you have to make sure you don't lose it, which is not all that much. But you know, let's face it, if you got it in your wallet, you put it somewhere where you just tap it and that's it, it's done. And you never have to take it out. For some reason, they haven't got with the program here yet. I don't know why. I don't know everything. You know, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, they got the they got the MRT runs the monorail, 
except they don't run the monorail because BTS is who controls it. But they're the ones who made it. The BTS, well, the MRT, rather, goes underground at Romkampang. It's, and then it goes above ground. So is it the BTS or is it the MRT? Which one is it going to be? It's going to be the MRT because it shows the MRT. Now, they're not done yet. I don't know when that's going to be done. Let me see here. I thought that they were supposed to be done already. I mean, it's almost done. It looks like it's almost done. Let's see here. Well, it says open January 23, 2010. It's not open. Let's see here. Well, I don't ever, I never top up my cards. I always just pay online or uh, I, I use my line, you link your line account with your BTS. And then you don't have to. You just add money onto your line account and that's done. Let's see here. 29 stations. When's it supposed to be done? By the end of April 2023, construction had progressed to 99.50%. So they're progressing at about a half a percent a month, which means it should have been done May or so, maybe June, but it's not done. Klong Ban Ma to Suwin Tawong. The seven stations is 99.70. The rest are all finished. When are they going to, when are they gonna open? Uh, corruption, I already saw about that. Rome Cloud, Rom Campaign, okay. Yeah, it's under construction, that's what it shows. Under construction. Tender awarded. That's the way it goes. Anyway, that's it, you know? You're stuck. You're stuck. But if you wanna, if you wanna top it up, uh, top up your, uh, your uh, BTS card, you just put, whatever money you put on the line goes to BTS. You link your card with the BTS. And then you don't have to do that. And with MRT, I think you can load it up on uh, with, with something. I can't remember what it is. I can't remember because I've, I've put money on the thing a long time ago, and I haven't had to put money on for a while. So, anyway. That's what you got to do. You know, link, listen, your line account is uh, it's fantastic. You can do all kinds of things with your line account. I don't know if you have line and if you have it if you have it set up to where you can put money on it and all that kind of stuff. But if you do that, you can pay your electric bill, your water bill. You gotta get one. Why don't you have one? Why don't you have a line account? You don't want one or you, you're just uh, what's what's the what's the reasoning behind not having a line account? Doesn't your wife have one? Doesn't somebody have one? <sighs> That's the end. You know, I mean, really, I, I know a lot of people don't want more accounts, but the line account does come in handy for a lot of things. Um, you know, like I said, you can use it for BTS. You can, if you want to, if you have a prepaid, a, po a prepaid, yeah. You can uh, pay onto your phone. You can do all kinds of things with it. Pay your electric, pay your water, pay all kinds of things. You can send money to people. You can do all kinds of things. So, anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, <coughs> the end of another stream, and uh, hopefully a stream will be coming soon. I'm not sure where. I'll be, what I'll be doing, if anything, I'm not sure, I, I may go a little while and not stream, I don't know, I'm not sure yet, um, you know, play with your Flagina chip, 
Okay. Anyway, um, now you can see up here, up top, we got the guys up here working at the top, working on the highway. Jim, you take it easy. As you can see, there they are. Boom. Very nice. Anyway, get yourself a line account, Bruce. Um, as much as you might not like to do it, get one. It'll come in handy for you and for others. And you'll be able to pay for a lot of things. It's easy. I mean, you can pay for food, you can pay for drinks, you can pay for all kinds of stuff. You know, I, I use it moderately. I use it every couple of days, and uh, it comes in very handy. So, anyway, that's all I have. So, until next time, I am Scott. I'm an American in Bangkok, coming to you from Cafe Amazon here at the mall. Very nice Cafe Amazon. Um, let me just show you something here through the grate. They got their food there. They've got all kinds of food. They've got all kinds of donuts and everything like that. Yeah, Bruce, I understand that. But, you know, if you connect up with the line, you don't have to deal with that bullshit. I don't have to go to the, I don't have to go to the booths. I don't have to deal with all those people. And it feels good to not have to go into line and stand there for five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it is, you know, I, you don't have to, it, it's whatever, but it, it does come in handy sometimes, so, anyway, Exeter, bye-bye, yes, everybody, bye-bye, I've got a couple of minutes, and then uh, I've got to go over and uh, gonna do my yoga again, my yoga, I'm going to do some yoga, Today's the hard yoga. Today is the day where the lady, she's older and she always kicks your ass. And it's not just 55 minutes or 60 minutes of yoga. It's always like 75 minutes. So, uh, it, you know, she makes sure she wants to kick your ass. Anyway, that's all I got. So I'll talk to you guys later.